Hello, this video describes the process of creating a widget in Perfect Widgets project. In this video, I'll show you how to create a simple clock using Sharpshooter Gauges or Perfect Widgets Editor. Both these products have the same editor, so this demo will work for both of them. First of all, let's draw a circle. Select the Circle tool from the toolbar. Draw. In the panel on the right side, you can see the properties of the current object, center, radius, etc. Let's set the fill of the circle. It will be radial gradient. Now you need to add some structural elements. There are several elements in the toolbar which you can use, joint, guide, scale, slider, and push button. Let's draw a joint. We use joint as a trajectory for the moving elements in radial gauges. So the arrow, for example, will move along this sector. Let's remove the gap in the trajectory and make the loop closed. You also can adjust rotation and size of the joint using these anchors. Let's move the start point of the joint to the top. Now we need to add the scale and subordinate it to the joint. Scale is an object which determines the maximum and minimum values the slider can take. We use this scale to show the hour hand. We create a clock so we need to set maximum to 12 and minimum to 0. Now we need to add a slider to the scale. Slider is an object which determines current position of moving element, arrows in our case. We name it hours. It will determine the position of the hour hand. A value parameter determines the value of the slider based on the scale the slider is subordinated to. Now let's add some visual elements to create an hour hand. Let's draw a needle. We subordinate it to our slider so it will receive current value of this slider. Let's change the fill style of the needle. Now it's time to take care of bindings. We use bindings to implement dependencies between the objects. Now let's bind the start and the end points of the needle to the slider value using R function. R function automatically sets the angle of the object according to the current slider value and the scale parameters. R function gets one argument, the distance from the center of the joint to the point. In our case, the needle will have start point 25 pixels behind the center and end point 75 pixels after the center. Let's test the hour hand. As you can see, it works. Now let's change the shape of the arrow. We change the width of the needle's end. Let's change the contour of the arrow. We need to add some key points to manage the arrow's shape. Basically, each point has two parts, the portion and the width. The portion parameter sets the percentage of height where the point is located, and the width parameter determines the width of the needle at this point. You can see that the needle now has 8 pixels width widening in its center. Let's add another scale for the minutes hand. Set the scale maximum to 60. Add the slider. Name it Minutes. 
Let's copy paste the needle and move it to new scale in the document tree. Change the bindings to make the arrow longer. Alter the shape of the needle by editing needle points. Let's test. It works fine. Now let's add scale labels, ticks, and other decorations. Select the scale labels object and add it to the hours scale. We choose the hours scale because we need 12 numbers, not 60. Now align the numbers. You see that there are 10 numbers on the scale. Let's set it to 12 by changing the divisions property. Currently, the numbers are aligned in the wrong direction. Let's change the text angle to 90. However, it looks odd. Let's align them in a different way. Let's remove the borders around the text. You see that there is a zero label which overlaps 12. Let's remove it. To do this, we will change the min limit property of the scale labels from 0 to 1. Slightly increase the size of the numbers. Now, let's add some ticks. Add ticks to the hour scale. Resize them. Now, adjust the position of the ticks relatively to the joint. Set the sub ticks position to far and the dock mode to inside. OK, now they stick to the joint. Let's make the joint larger to fit the circle. The ticks have 10 divisions. Let's change them to 12. Also, each sector will have 5 subdivisions. Now we see that ticks are too short. Let's make them longer. And a little more. You can see that both ticks and scale labels are automatically located along the joint they are attached to and get the limits from the correspondence scale. Okay, now let's add some final decorations. Change radius. Fill. Okay, we have a ready clock. Let's test them. And finally, let's save our widget in IMK format so we can work with it later.